Do you lose clients because you missed their phone call or their email or they filled out a form three weeks ago? Well, I have a solution to that problem. Workflows, automated workflows. You need some in your business and I'm going to give you five. Let's go. All right, first of all, what is a workflow? A workflow is basically a flow chart of activity that happens in your business or in your systems. There's lots of systems that do custom workflows and the one I use is high level or go high level. So that'll be the software I'm showing you today, but you can do this in other software. But let's just start at the beginning. What the heck is a workflow? Well, a workflow has a certain anatomy and that anatomy starts with the trigger. All right, you need a trigger. So what's a trigger in a workflow? Well, that trigger can be lots of different things. It's something that somebody does that sets this workflow off, right? So it could be a form was filled out, okay? It could be a call was made that went unanswered. It could be um, a tag that was changed, maybe. It could be... Um, a social media form that was filled out, like a Facebook lead form. So Facebook lead form. It could be a lot of different things or a status was changed. Uh, could be a status was changed on an opportunity. Lots of different things. So the trigger is what starts the whole thing off. And if I were you, I would do what I'm doing right now and sketch out your workflow. That sketch will help you visualize what will happen before you look at the software and get all confused. So first you choose your trigger. Now, the great thing about workflows is you can have multiple triggers for the same activity, okay? So you could group work triggers, workflow triggers together. For example, if you want the same thing to happen, if they fill out a lead form or they fill out a Facebook form or they call and you miss the call, that's awesome. You can put all of those triggers at the top of your workflow, but let's start simple. Let's just start with one trigger, all right? Let's say that somebody um, filled out a form on your website that they are interested in your services, okay? Simple form. All right, so now your workflow goes down. Now you have to decide what happens next. Oftentimes there's a wait period if that makes sense, you can have a wait of a few minutes, a few days, whatever. So keep that in mind that most of these have weights that you can incorporate. They fill out the form. You probably don't want them to really wait very long. And then, depending upon what you collected on the form, things happen, right? So next could be that you send an SMS or a text message. Or maybe you also send an email. So it depends on what you collected in that form. If you collected their phone number and you collected their email, you could do both. And here's where the automatic piece comes in. You have already crafted your SMS and your email, and they should say similar things. So hey, sorry I missed your call, or hey, thanks for reaching out. Let's book a call, or let's book a consultation. You should have a plan on what you want to say in that email, but it would be the same thing you'd want to say if you were there and they handed you the form. What would you say to them? Put that in your email and your SMS to them. And have them do another action, okay? You don't want to just say, hey, thanks for getting in touch. You could, but that kind of ends the conversation until you get involved again. And you want this to happen automatically so you don't have to be involved. All right, so that email goes out and maybe in that email you have a link um, for your calendar to schedule, okay? Let's say you have a link to schedule. All right, if they click it, one thing could happen. If they don't, another thing could happen. Here could be a reminder SMS 
to book a call and you could provide the same link. Here, if they actually booked the call, then you're golden, right? They booked a call, that's great. That probably heads off to another workflow. But the point is, you have not been involved in any of this. It's just happened automatically. It's one of my favorite words, automatically. One thing I like to insert that I would put in my workflow here is I would put, um, I would add a step to say, send me an SMS telling me that somebody's entered this workflow. I always want to know if somebody's entered one of my workflows so that I can go give them personal attention if I need to, or I at least know that workflow is churning along. I can look on the calendar because maybe they've booked an appointment. So I like to know when that's happened. Other things you can do, you can also add a tag. So if they entered your workflow a certain way, this is the form workflow, you could add a tag that says lead form. So now you know that that lead came in through that lead form and through this workflow. So I always like to add a tag and I always like to get an SMS to know somebody entered one of my workflows. So that's just a little bonus tip. So you should get a piece of paper and you should write out a few workflows that you would like to see happen. If my potential client does this, then this will happen, then this will happen, then this will happen. Sketch out some easy ones. These can get really complex and really complicated. I have a couple that are fairly complicated. I have some very simple ones. So why don't we take a look at some of the workflows that I use in my business? Ready? Let's go. Okay, here's workflow number one. This is our appointment confirmation and reminder workflow. So someone has created an appointment, maybe through a link to a calendar, Let's look at this trigger. So the appointment status, you can choose a birthday reminder, contact created uh, when you first created it. There's lots of different uh, statuses you can do, and we're going to call this the appointment. Uh, event type is normal, and the appointment status is confirmed. So they've confirmed this appointment, and that is going to trigger off the entire branching situation. Now this is in go high level. So this uh, is where I create all my workflows. I highly recommend it. You can get a link below in the description. If you'd like to try high level out, I highly recommend it for your small business. So after they do that, they get a confirmation email. So we click on that. That is an action item. So here is the trigger and that triggers off this action item. So we put our from name, our from email, subject appointment confirmation. You can select a template and then you can put in the message. If you don't want a template, you can just record the message here, write it out, add a picture. Um, right now, this is the information that's in this one. Your appointment has been confirmed. Now, this is great because this has these dynamic variables so that it will automatically put the first name of the client that started the appointment and it will have the start time, um, their first name again, and then it'll have a Zoom link. You could put other links in there and it has the ability for them to add it to their Google Calendar and their Outlook Calendar. They can also get a link to cancel and reschedule. And then I can put my name in by taking the variable and sticking it into the, taking custom value, my user first name, and now it'll put my name in for thanks. And then I can save that action. So now we have a confirmation email, then 24 hours before the appointment, they're going to, so one day before the appointment, you can set this up to whatever you want. They're going to go ahead and get a reminder. All right. So we've got that. They're also going to get a reminder email. The reminder email 
will have the information that in 24 hours they have a meeting and it'll repeat all the information from the other email. It'll do the same again one hour before the appointment, both as SMS and an email. Actually, this is just an email. We could add an SMS, so we could put in um, an action. So let's put um, SMS. So we could ask it to send an SMS one hour before the appointment. So here's the action. I could have a template and I could add an attachment if I want and I could add a file and I will have the custom message that I have set up to send as an SMS. All right, so that is the appointment confirmation and reminder. That is going to increase the number of leads that actually stick to their appointments, which is what we would love to see. All right, that's workflow number one. Let's check out workflow number two. Let's look at workflow number two. This is missed call text back. So if you're a single person business or you're a service business where you're doing plumbing or electrician or service calls or anything like that, so it's hard for you to always answer your phone when people call the business, this is for you. All right, so in comes the trigger, which is a new incoming phone call. So someone calls your business number and you don't answer or it rings X number of times then you trigger this workflow. The next stage in this workflow is it creates a new opportunity for you in the new lead stage. So in your opportunity section, you get a new lead. So you know that somebody is interested in your business. It then sends an SMS to them. So let's look at this step. This is the SMS it sends to them. It says, hey there. And it puts the location name here. So that's Future Ready Consulting. Sorry we missed your call. How can we help you? And then it tells people how to opt out because you really need to do that. So if people don't want to get texts from you, that they can do that and opt out. All right. So it sends them this text message. Then they can write back and they can say, hey, I'm just looking to get a quote or I'd like to schedule an op uh, book a calendar call or something. But this particular one waits 30 seconds. And then because this one is designed to try and get more people interested in missed call text back so that I can set it up for them. Then this one goes to, hey, wasn't that cool? Imagine how much business you could save if a simple text like that went out to a caller every time your business missed a call. So it's just showing people that you too can have this service if you think this was cool. And again, they can opt out at this point if they want to. So then it waits 15 seconds. It texts them again and say, hey, can we show you how to do that? You can try it risk-free for 14 days. But you could say something else. You can send a link at this point. Then you wait for a reply or one day, whichever comes first. All right. If they say, yes, I'm interested, then you get send them a sales call link. So here's the sales call calendar link. Um, then we get a notification. We have a new lead reply that comes to me and we have an internal email notification. So everyone's aware we have someone who's very interested in this service and we need to get back to them right away. So, so let's say they said no, not easy, not interested. And then we have other lead notifications go out. And if they didn't reply at all, there's a final SMS. We would love to speak with you. Follow the link to book a free call today. And that is the final step in this workflow. And the end of these two branches, it moves them to a pipeline stage. So you have to think of the goal in mind for the workflow. And the goal in mind for this particular workflow is an incoming call that we were not able to answer. Hey, could they text us and tell us what they want? Are they interested in getting missed call text back for their business? They can say yes and go on. If they say no or don't reply, then we can just send them a text that says, hey, we'd love to talk to you and book a call with you. Here's the calendar link. You can make those texts, whatever you want, but you want to also make sure that you let them know they can opt out. 
So you have your actions you can edit, and then you have statistics on what is happening and how many people have come through your particular workflow, which is really nice to have to see, is it working, is it not working? In high level, you also have a test workflow so that you can test it out before you even publish it and make sure it's working the way you should. I highly recommend that. Sometimes you get into weird workflows that you get text three times, the same thing. You don't want that. And there's different settings you can have here. So some of the settings are, can people come back in if, if you want them to, or, or do they not come in? If they respond, it'll stop the response. Um, you can set the time zone and specific times. So if it's this workflow is triggered at midnight by something and you don't want to respond then or text people then, that's understandable, but nobody should be calling at midnight. But you can set that up to help block that kind of thing or make sure you don't disturb people. And so there's a lot of settings you can do. You can look in the enrollment history and the execution logs. So you always know this is working properly. All right, that is Miss Call Text Back Workflow. Let's go look at another one. All right, here is workflow number three. This is a, a free mission vision form that we provide if you're having trouble determining your mission and your vision for your new business, then this guide helps you through that and it's free. So it's offered on our website. You click a button to fill out the form and then we send you the mission vision guide. So this is a very simple one. This is one I did early on and I could make this one a lot better now. Uh, but the trigger is that they filled out the form and submitted it. Okay. And then they get uh, an email that provides it. And it's a template that I did that they get their free mission vision. It's linked in there. So it fills it out. It puts their name at the top and it signs my name and it sends them the free guide. Now I have now collected their information as well. So I have their name and their email address and I may have asked for a phone number I don't recall. And then I add a tag because I wanna know that that is how they came into our lead database. Now I should kick them into another funnel at this point or workflow that asks them if they'd like to book a call and discuss their new business. So that is a step that I should add. So you can either add steps in here or you can send them to another workflow. That's probably the best so that you keep it modularized. So if I have a new free offer form that I create, I can just create a new free offer form and then still kick them. Or if I have multiple offer forms, I can kick them over to the lead nurturing segment workflow. So think about the modular pieces. If your workflows are starting to get a little arms and legs as you draw them out, potentially you should modularize them and just make them self-contained and then you can send them to another workflow when they get to the end. So this one's very basic. They filled out my form. They get what I promised them. I now have their information and they get a tag. So I could also add a notification to myself that they somebody went through this workflow but I will also see that they got added to our database and I can do a smart list search for that tag if I want to see how many people or who has taken advantage of this offer. So it's a really basic one, but again, if I had to get notified that somebody wants this, then I've got to go find it, write the email, click it in, send it. Then I got to go find the person and add a tag. It takes time out of your day. And you may think, well, one or two people, what's the big deal? Well, what if it gets to 10 a week, 100 a week? You don't want to be handling this traffic. You want automation. They don't want to wait on you either. You want to do your work. They want to get the thing they wanted. And so create workflows to make your life easier and your customer service top notch. But this next one is pretty darn cool. It's called the Fast Five Light. All right. People do not want to wait for you to get in touch with them. You cannot put something out there and have them fill out a form or a lead and you get back to them in a couple days. They're going to find someone else to do this for them. I just experienced this while booking a, um, a boat tour on a vacation. I just started going down the list of boat tours and 
one of them answered and said, we'll get back to you. Thanks for calling. Nothing. I just went down to the next one and called. I actually didn't have to call. It actually had a booking link on their website. I booked it, done. Now that person called me later that evening and I appreciated it very much, but I said, I've already booked. Sorry about that. So people are not waiting anymore for people to get back to them at the end of the workday. They want to hear from you right away. So this one is triggered by a Facebook lead form submitted. Um, this is not one I currently am using because I don't have Facebook lead forms, but you can trigger this with whatever lead form. But here's a lead form submitted. All right, they get a conversational email saying, thanks for claiming our offer. So you've made some offer. Thanks for claiming our offer. Have you experienced this service before? So maybe um, you have an offer for a free 15-minute massage, right? You're a massage business and you say, claim your free 15-minute massage. So they click on claim this 15-minute massage. So you're asking them, have you experienced this before? And they can return that and let you know. You're also going to text them. Have you claimed this offer? Have you experienced this service before? So now what you're trying to get at is a little bit of a qualifying of your leads. So have they done massages before? And if they have, what was their experience? Or if they haven't, um, you may want to qualify that lead more and be sure they're going to work for your service. All right. Contact replied, contact didn't reply, or none. So contact replied. Was it positive or negative? So let's say I replied, no, I've never experienced this service. I've never had a massage before. So they get a survey with a link to have them fill out a questionnaire to find out, are they a good candidate for the massage? Or maybe it's a dentistry or um, who knows? But it's a questionnaire that'll help you qualify your leads more. If they said, oh, yeah, I've had a massage before, then you go, all right, great. Here's the link to book your massage, your free massage, and pick an opening that works for you. So you send them a booking link. They can do that. And then when they come in for that service, you can work on that lead to get more bookings for additional massage services. And you're golden. All right, so let's say they ignored that. All right, they did not reply. Um, this is a pretty cool feature. So you can do a call connect. All right. So what happens is, is that person should get, um, should get assigned to someone in your organization, one of your uh, lead people or sales people, and then they are going to, the ring is going to come in to that person. So I'm going to get a call, say, and it's going to give me a whisper call. So it's going to say, hey, a new lead's been generated. Their name is blank. Press any key to connect. I'm going to like, all right. So I'm going to click a, a key. I'm going to know who I'm talking to. So let's say it's Keith. So Keith, I hear that his name is Keith. He wants to take advantage of our um, massage, but he didn't really reply to our other things. So I'm going to call Keith. All right. So I'm going to call Keith. It's going to connect me to his phone. He may or may not answer. If he doesn't answer, you can push a pre-recorded voicemail that will then play for Keith when he does go look, listen to his voicemails. Why do you want to do that? Because it's very consistent. It, they're going to get the same voicemail that you wanted them to get every time, whether I picked up this lead or one of my employees picked up this lead. So this is really great for consistency and response immediately. You're going to wait a day. And then you're going to say, hey, I'm just checking back to see if you're still interested in your 15-minute free massage. Um, is there any questions we can answer for you? Which gives that person an opportunity to text back and say, yeah, I've got a question. Are these licensed masseuses? Or who is doing this service? And you can answer that. Uh, if they don't answer... You've kind of given them enough time now. You've called, you've left a voicemail, and then you've tried to SMS them. So done, right? But this way, if someone fills out that Facebook lead form, whether it's, you know, 10 o'clock at night, nine in the morning, noon, and you're busy and you're in the middle of your business or whatever you're doing, they're going to get attention. They're going to get responses and they're going to see people cared that they filled out this form and you're going to get them booked, hopefully, for that 15-minute free massage 
And then when they come in for the 15 minute free massage, you try to sell them a package or additional services. Really excellent. It's called the Fast Five Light. Excellent workflow. All right, this is our fifth and final uh, workflow that you should set up right away. And this one's a must, okay? This is the review request workflow. Why does this matter? Because your reputation matters. People will find you on Google Business Profile or find your website, and they wanna know if people liked you and your services. They're gonna look at your Google reviews or your Facebook reviews. So you need to get those numbers up. This is the way to do it. All right, so what do we have to do? You can trigger this any way you want. I have a trigger. It's I, I put a tag on. It's the review request tag. So you can have multiple triggers here. You could have um, some closeout signal for your business. You could have they paid their bill. You could have a lot of different triggers here, but this one is... I like to make sure I trigger it. So I, I just put a review request tag on their contact. It sends them a review request via SMS. And I have it in the reputations setting. And then they wait 60 minutes and it sets a review request via email. Now you think, well, if you bothered to put the tag on, why didn't you just send it yourself? Because all these little pieces take time. I may close out three, four, or five clients in a day. This would I'd have to do this for each one. All I need to do is pull up those clients, add the tag, next one tag, next one tag, next one tag, and move on with my day. All of these things are now going to go out. I don't want to remember that in an hour after I send the SMS, I need to send another email review request. So I send these out and it automatically goes out to them and they can click a link, makes it simple, and they can fill out a review for me and the business. Excellent way to do it, but you could have multiple triggers again. Um, if there's a product that's purchased, you could, as soon as it's purchased and it's closed out, you could go ahead and send a review request. There's lots of ways you fulfill an order. There's lots of triggers you could have is what I'm saying. But you need to ask for reviews. It's okay. People want to give you reviews. They just don't think about it or have an easy link to click. But if you provide that easy link, then they're going to leave you reviews for your business. If you don't do any of the other workflows, you should do this one. All right. That is five great workflows that you can set up for your business today. There's lots of softwares out there to fill out workflows. We prefer Go high level for our business. There's a link in the description for below for you to get a 15-day free trial. Or you can contact me and I will set your account up for you and we will get you started through our company. All right. Check out some of our other tips and tricks for small businesses because we're getting quite the library. Hit the subscribe button and have a great day. And remember, without impact, it doesn't matter. Take care.